And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg travel. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of fishing is truly in your hands. Hi, everybody. Are you going to contact us on the show tonight? You can interact for sure. You can do it on our Facebook page. We're going to be following it tonight as we go through our guest and some of the special things that we have happening tonight. You're also going to be, uh, you're going to be able to private message if you want on the Facebook page. That's Fish and Sticks TV on Facebook. We'll follow up after this broadcast and we'll get it out there on YouTube for you probably tomorrow. But in the meantime, I want you guys to kick back and enjoy what we have tonight. We have something really, really, really interesting tonight. So right now, we're going to take you on a little trip up to where we catch a lot of really big pike, and we'll be right back with the show for tonight. There, on your left, you can almost see it. One of the most magnificent sights on the planet, Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel. Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines pure crystal clear water you can actually drink, and countless fish. Boy, has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to Other Side River Lodge. From the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe, Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge, where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Most of you guys know by now that uh, I'm throwing Grant Rods. I've been throwing Grant Rods for a long, long time. And that said, there's something I need to make mention tonight if you don't mind. Jim Grant is one of these people who really care about what's going on in the industry, and he's doing a very good job. There's two young men I want to make mention tonight, if I could. Bear with me. These young men have just, uh, they just pulled it off, if you will, what most anglers would like to do in a lifetime. They have won the Michigan State Bass Championship. It's a team championship up in Michigan, and these two kids have put it together. They've made it happen, and Jim Grant is responsible in part for getting these two boys on the water and getting them out there so they can enjoy what's going on. Don't know exactly what their weights were, but when you're pulling it off, number one, you're doing something. And if that wasn't enough, they followed it up a couple of days later, and they pulled off the number two win at the FLW Open. It's Gunnar Wilson and, and Zach Manabak, and they are from Michigan. Uh, they represent Heartland, Michigan. These two young men are definitely on their way. They've got an interest in the sport, and Jim Grant is doing an awful lot to keep these kids on the water and involved with, with, with what's going on, and that is so instrumental. Hey, I got a question for you. Where were you 25 years ago? <laughs> yeah. Where were you 25 years ago? Do you remember where you were 25 years ago? I can tell you where I was. We were in a studio producing a video that literally was considered the gone with the wind of the musky world. It was muskies in the shield A to Z. And it wasn't simply me putting it together. It was a it was a, a bunch of effort from a lot of people. Rich Tuomi, Matt Dahl, uh, uh, just a whole bunch of people. Uh, Dr. John Schneider, uh, we had uh, just a, my brother Mike, just a ton of people came in on this production. It took us weeks and weeks and weeks to put this thing together. And you're going to see a piece of it tonight because young and old, we're going to be talking jerk baits tonight. I'm going to be bringing on Todd Young here in just a bit, but before we do that, and we're going to be talking jerk baits, but before we do that, I want to take you back 25 years ago. 
I want you to listen to what we said 25 years ago. Look at the lures we used, some of the things we did with them, and how we made these lures work. And then when we bring Todd on, we're going to talk about some of that and how it relates to what they're doing over at Fat Easy Muskie, because quite frankly, the correlations are astronomical. So if you would, let's just kick back here and, uh, and just have just a little bit of fun with what took place 25 oh, years ago. Of wood. All made out of wood. Wood. When we talk about wood, we're talking about jerk baits, and that's for the method in which we use the baits. Now, there's three common types of jerk baits that we're going to talk about today, and the first is a swing type action, and we're going to use the Fidelis Reef Hog as an example. It comes in two versions. You have the smaller version, which is a more erratic. You can run it high through the water column with lots of breaks, lots of jerks. Works well over cabbage beds. Yeah. Again, the important thing here is it's a fast action bait. Where, and then the bigger one, which I like to tend to work at a little bit slower. And the importance with all of our jerk baits is the fisherman gives the bait the action. How you work that rod tip is going to depend upon how you want that bait to behave. With the big reef hog, if you twitch it, so you just give small little jerks with the rod tip, what will happen, the bait will jerk right. to the left and jerk to the right. But with those small twitches, it will stay high in the water column. It will go maybe four or five inches below the surface. If you, tw if you twitch and then pause, it will lay like that and then twitch, twitch, and you can get it to swim real nice. If you want it to dive, you give more of a stroke. You know, you, you pull your rod tip maybe three feet, yeah. and you stroke it, and then it dives down. You can get these baits with the reef hogs with that stroking action to run maybe 10, 12, 13 feet down. You can work the edges of reefs really nice this way. They work real good next to the weed beds. Absolutely. The second style of jerk bait is a diving jerk bait. This happens to be a common everyday ordinary black suic. Favorite bait. This bait works by diving. With short twitches of the rod tip, the bait goes down and gives you a down and up motion. And with a long sweep of your rod tip, this jerk bait can then swing off and pause yeah, before you start twitching it again. Yeah, the big distinction here is this is a straight line bait where the swing goes left right. You're right. Uh, so it's coming two basic sizes, the standard 9 inch and then the bigger 10 inch. So I like the 10 inch because in windy weather, windier conditions, I can still throw this bait and get it where I want. Yeah. I can also take a tail and bend it down like this and that'll give me a different action on the bait. I can then dive it deeper and it comes and it'll come back up. Yeah. When I get over cabbage beds, where, I, where they're really high close to the surface, I can bend this tail a little straighter and work it higher. Yeah, the angle of the bend determines how, how much diving it does. Another diving jerk bait is the bobby bait. This bait has a little different tail. You notice a lot, it's a fanned out tail as opposed to that of a suic. It also has a notched nose. Now when I cast out this bobby bait, I'll let it sit on the water for a little bit, then I'll twitch the rod. Mm -hmm. And what this notch does is, is make the water gurgle. Yeah, it catches air in the water. That's just one more thing I can do to try to attract that muskie's attention. I then can work it like a swing bait a couple for a couple twitches, and then it becomes a diving bait. And not only a diving bait, but when I swing my rod tip, this actually wobbles. Yeah, the it, fin on the back with those cuts gives it that wobble action. It, with any of the diving baits, the real advantage is working over weed beds where I can work it down into pockets mm -hmm. and let it work it back up again to come out over the top of the weed bit and back down into yeah. the next pocket. An another trick there is when you're on top of the weeds, you can let it sit. Drive it right into the thickest patch and let it sit right there. That sometimes triggers, triggers hits. The third type of uh, jerk bait that we want to talk about today is an actual crank bait. And there's two that we like to use as a staff a lot. The first is the swim whiz. Uh, if you notice, there's two eyes on the swim whiz. We hook it to use it as a jerk bait onto the first eye. To use it as a crank bait, you hook it onto the second eye. The second eye for crank for jerk baits doesn't work very well. Hook it onto the first eye. Uh, the importance here when you're working the swim whiz is to give your rod a big swing. You want a big action. You want to cover four or five feet. We can turn around with the body and then crank right back yep. to the bait. And what that does is give this bait plenty of time to wobble and you know wobble through the water. A different type of action is the grandma's. And again here there's Two types of grandmas, just like there was with the reef hooks. You have these hooks are sharp. Ooh, they look like it. Yeah, you have the the smaller lip and a bigger lip. The bigger lip is a diving bait; it really digs down into the water. It doesn't work very good as a jerk bait. The sh the shallow runner, which has the smaller lip, is a very good jerk bait. And the way you work this, unlike the swim whiz, the swim whiz was a swing with the rod tip. With the small one, it's it's more a stroke. You stroke down and you twitch it, and because of the action that the grandma's has, which is a real broad side to side, when you stroke it down, it dives and it 
just goes back and forth and it pauses there. And it gives it, it looks just like a big wounded shiner middle because of these, these big shiny sides. I notice the hooks on that are not standard. No. Uh, grandmas, when they come out of the box, have a four-aught hook. They're the size that are on the small reef hook. What you want here are five-aught hooks. And the reason why we do this, when the bait sits in the water, these little bit bigger hooks add a little bit more weight and make that bait neutrally buoyant. So when you stroke it down, it sits there right in the water. It doesn't rise up. If you have the smaller hook, it's not quite as heavy and it tends to rise. Wounded fish don't go down and then float up. You want them to sit there and so that fish has a good chance to look at it. They don't all of a sudden pop up. Yeah. I've done a modification on this bobby bait too. Uh, I do it for a different reason. Uh, what I like to do is use a bigger hook on the bobby bait so the hooks come out past the contour of the bait. Yeah, if you notice the bobby bait's See really wide. Come out. And one more advantage, if I take just take a Berkeley player and get on this barb and, and uh, bend the prong of the hook out a little bit, That'll give me one more advantage in hooking power. You know, one more thing while you got that Berkley. All baits or all hooks come with barbs. And what I like to do is take that Berkley and pinch down the barbs. We can actually bend this barb right in with yep. the pliers very easily. I do that for two reasons. One, for the fish, it's easy to take a barbless hook out of the fish. And two, for my own safety. When I'm holding on to that fish, and if I do slip or something and the hook gets in me, because it's barbless, it hurts, but I can yank it right back out and I don't have to quit my day of fishing. We can also notice that this uh, particular hook is attached by means of an eye screw. There's three basic methods for attaching a hook. The eye screw, the uh, uh, split ring, which we have on a suic here, and you have the third type. Yeah, the, co the cotter pin. And in this version, what happens is the cotter pin runs straight up through the bait, comes up, hooks over, and then bends down into the bait. And the way you take these off is you take either a screwdriver or like a knife, dig underneath the cotter, kin a cotter pin a little bit, bend it up, get it nice and straight, grab your pliers, grab the cotter key underneath the bait, and pull the cotter key out. Uh, cotter keys can sometimes be reused, but when you bend them up and stuff a couple times, they tend to get really weak. So what I usually do is uh, I buy myself just a, a big batch of the cotter keys so I can, every time I change a hook, I can use a new one. And again, you just push the cotter key back up through. And when you do that, the uh, hook has two ways it can ride. It can ride like this, which is the wrong way. You don't, we don't want your, your uh, hook sticking into the bait. So what you do is you spin the hook around so when it folds up, the hooks are on either side of the bait. Mm -hmm. And then all you do is take your cutter, snip off the top because the cotter key comes blunt. You want it to have a sharp edge. You snip off the top and then take your pliers, bend it, and then stick it right back down on the wood and give it, give it a good crimp and it'll be in there. And we're just about ready to fish except for one thing. We except just put one. a new hook on. New hook. So what we want to do is use our file. A small six inch mill mastered file works really, very easy, uh, easily to sharpen a hook. I can take a hook, lay it against the bait like this, come down the side, two strokes on this side, two strokes on this side. I can then test it with my fingernail. Sure, if it digs in your fingernail, it's a good sharp hook. Let's take a closer there's... look at this bait right here, John. Yeah. See right down here, there's three holes that have been drilled in. Lead weights have been epoxied in. Mm -hmm. and I know what this has done? This has given me a suic that is now less than neutral buoyant. That's a heavier bait. I can get this down to real deep depths. I can get down to 15 feet along a weed bed. In fact, in fall, it becomes advantageous because in the fall, I can really get down and work this bait slow. Slow, and yet yeah. slow, but you can still get it deep. That, that's the key trick there. You've done a couple of modifications to swim wedges. Yeah, one more thing I want to say about the suic before we stop. With the extra weight, when you're working those real windy shorelines, with the extra weight, you can use a suic in those windy pots. Whereas sometimes if you don't have the weight, you throw a suic and it's too hard to work into the wind. So the weighted one is uh, special that way. I hear a rattle in that swim Yeah, way. with swim whizzes, uh, you, you can do a couple things. What we like to do is drill a small hole in, take a tapering screw, and screw it in, and then screw it back out, and you can modify it in two ways. In this one, we put little steel balls inside, little steel shots, and as you can tell, it has a nice hearty rattle. What you do is then you screw the screw back in and epoxy it so it stays shut and it, it doesn't leak. The other version, is the no, same, same trick, you drill a hole, but instead of putting steel shot, you put like some, yeah, some have, oil of some sort, center. just plain mm -hmm. old everyday vegetable cooking oil, and then again, screw it in, epoxy it, and what this does is make the bait a little heavier. Again, you're going for neutral buoyancy. You want that bait so when you stroke it down, when you swim it down, it sits there and, and is neutrally buoyant right in the water. While we're on jerk baits, let's look at one other thing. We all use a leader when we're fishing for muskies. Uh, we like to use a leader that's 10 inches long, 
I use a Berkley stainless steel wire. It's a brown coated wire. It's 0.024 diameter. This makes a very nice leader. Yeah, the important thing here is your leader tends to be the same size as your bait. So if you're throwing a 10 inch suic, it's nice to throw a 10 inch leader. I usually make my leaders the standard 10 inches. I can pre-make them all and they're very easy to get out of my little sure. uh, tube. Well, we've looked at some of the jerk baits. Now let's see what a jerk bait can really do to improve your fishing success. Yes, we're into a big fish. Got a net ready? Not yet. Ready. Okay, I don't know what I got here. Besides a very big fish. We gotta go out a little bit. We gotta another super fit. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let me kick this thing in 24 high. We need to get out so we can drift out here. She's okay in the net just like she is. Another super fish. That fish pulled really hard. I mean, really hard. It felt like my reel was loose and everything, but it was unbelievable, wasn't. Bob. <laughs> okay, just kind of hang on to her for a second. We'll get out here so we can drift. Cause there's a little bit of a reef right behind us. All right, man. Should be okay, huh? Yeah, she's in the water still. Yeah. We just need to just be able to get off. for her to go nuts. No, she's okay. We need to be able to get off. There she goes. Okay. Like she's I said, right. I think she's okay. off. Okay. Is she off? Yeah, I Good. think so. Okay, my line is not cut, okay? Right. Uh, she's close to off. Yeah, real close. She doesn't go nuts. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of monster pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on, aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish! That is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100 just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. Well, like I said, we're going to have some fun tonight. I'm going to be bringing on Todd Young here in just a second. That video that we just played shot 25 years ago. Folks, some of those lures are still in the market today. Some of those modifications are still being used today. But today, the lure manufacturers that are making lures, they're incorporating those types of modifications in the actual lure you buy off the shelf. That's the difference between then and now. And I'll tell you this, there are times when jerk baits cannot be beat. I'm just serious about it, they can't be beat. And when is that? It's when the water temperature's below peak. That's my opinion. Say, so let's bring on Todd. Todd Young, you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, good evening, Todd. Welcome to Fishing Sticks. I hope we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, give us a oh, little yeah. history I, I... on uh, on Fat Musky A to Z, or Fat A to Z Musky. Yeah, first I want to thank you for having us on there, Bob. Uh, you know, I met Bob back years ago 
2001, we were doing the PMTT. Bob did the PMTT. We did the PMTT. I was fishing with Dale Wiley, and uh, you know, I got to meet him and talk to Bob a little bit there. And I'm I'm really glad that he's uh, invited us on this show. You know, Fat Az Muskie. We have a lot going on here with Fat Az Muskie. We're doing baits. We're doing rod holders. I also run a full time guide service. Full time for us here in Western New York is June through November. And uh, so I got four or five months to get it done. Uh, that's that's with Muddy Creek Fishing Guides. Uh, but uh, the Fatty Z Muskie part of it is I'm partners up with uh, Andy Zomchik out of Edinburgh, PA. And uh, we make some swim baits, we make some glide baits, and we make some jerk baits. The jerk baits are the big the big boys in our on our line right now. And uh, we also do stuff with rod holders. Lots of guys are getting our rod holders, so we got lots of lots lots we can talk about. Well, we're going to talk about all of it. That's for sure. You provided us yeah. with a <laughs> video, uh, Todd, on some of your lures. And what I liked about yeah. you guys' lures to start with was the finish on the lures. If you go back to look at the lures that we used 25 years ago, they didn't have yeah. the fit and finish, if you will, of today's lures. No. And the consumer no, didn't, didn't expect it, okay? They really didn't. Uh, but no. what, you make, what you make today is crazy. Folks, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm talking about. This is the lure I'm talking about. I made a big mistake last week uh, when I said Brett Alexander sent me a lure, and I'm so apologetic. Brett and Wade Alexander are both friends of mine, and I simply confused the two names. Uh, Wade Alexander, who is a guide up on the Midnight Sun, sent me that lure I just had in my hand, and that's one of one of Todd and Andy's premier lures, if you will. Uh, let's start out. What do you say with the? Uh, let me get backdrop on this six-inch version first, Todd. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, the jerk bait model. You mean, Bob? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's take yeah. a look at some of the video on, and let's take a look at the. The six-inch Raptor, the the Fat Az Muskies yeah. six-inch Raptor jerkbait. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the six-incher. You know what what we tried to do here with, was with me doing the guiding. I grew up. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, 40, 40 years. <laughs> uh, I had a hard time when I was taking clients out. You know, when you're using some of these baits that are very buoyant. I wanted a neutral buoyant jerkbait, and Andy and I started working on this. At this is after we already. He already had the, the, you know, the swim baits out, and I wanted something that would stay down for people, you know, if they didn't have the right rhythm, things like that. And, uh, you know, the six-inch jerk bait is our smallest version. We're going to be coming out this year with a new soft tail. Uh, you know, it's going to have two, two, two smaller hooks on it. It's going to have a soft tail on the end, and uh, that bait that bait doesn't get down quite as deep as our other baits, but it's it, it's relatively neutral buoyant. So, you know, you pop it a couple times, it sort of stays right there in that level. It doesn't want to float up. It's not sinking out of the zone, you know. And that, that, that has been crucial to the my fishing the last few years, is just keeping that bait in the zone when you got guys throwing bait that that aren't real familiar with bait casters. They're not, not, not real familiar with what we're doing. And, uh, you know, the six-incher is one. It stays up a little higher in the water, you know, in, in, in the water column. And, uh, you know, we throw that a lot in the early seasons around here and things like that. Well, we're looking but, at, uh, we're looking at the eight-inch now. Day. I had a friend of mine call me today, and he said, what's on the mm -hmm. show tonight? And I told him point blank, you need to be watching the show tonight. And he says, why? Why do I need to be watching it? And I told him, I says, the lure, one of the lures that we're going to be looking at tonight, I guarantee you that I could fill the boat with that lure. And that's the eight-inch yeah. Raptor. <laughs> that lure, the yeah. hang time on that lure is amazing. When you yeah. when you That's think about we're being, up with. yeah, Todd, when you think about working a lure, working it below sight, you have to know that that lure is working correctly. And I'm watching yeah. that raptor in the tank shots you sent me, and oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that thing! There's yeah. no way you could miss a beat with that lure. No, it's it, it. I mean, what what that lure does? I mean, that's what we tried to come up with something that was neutral buoyant. You know, I loved. I loved throwing sucs when I was a kid. I loved throwing, and they still work. But 
you know, the ease the ease to work those neutral buoyant baits. I mean, I I can't say enough about it. I know that I, I know that that's our bait. And <laughs> it's hard not to come up with a commercial here, but you know, I've had seventy year old ladies throwing that bait. They pulled a couple times. It pauses. You can you know they can take their time. They can do what they want, and those fish just smack that bait on that pause. Uh, and it, it stays in the zone. It doesn't float out of the way. You know, it doesn't float up to the top or it doesn't sink. And uh, that's the big thing about our bait, that, that Raptor. You know, that comes in a, it, it comes in a straight version and a soft tail version. Normally, the soft tail version runs a little bit higher. You know, typically when I'm running a weed edge, the, the person that's, like, in the weeds in, on that growth, have them throwing the one that has the soft tail and the people fishing the deeper side have the one that does not have the soft tail. And I mean, it's easy to get that thing down five feet real quick and uh, it'll just pause there. There's another lure in your group. It's the stinger glide bait. Oh my yeah, goodness. Could you, could you pull that thing off of reefs or what? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the stinger is just another bait that we make. Uh, I was, well, I was playing, it was really calm today. Those glide baits work really good. Uh, nice, calm water, you know, because it takes some time to use them. It, it, it's a slowdown for me. I'm a jerkbait guy. I like ripping those things through the weeds and fast action. And uh, today we had, you know, 85-degree water, it, it, not air, water temps, 85-degree air temps, dead, flat, calm, sunny, just pulling it through the weeds. I was, I was playing with one of those Stinger glide baits and, I got a 27-inch uh, wall I come up and grab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a nice bonus. Yeah, in, in, in a wall I color. Yeah, he was uh, eating, his, eating his can. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but, 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 but the gliders is popular with some of the guys out there. Uh, you know, it, it, it works well. It's a slow-moving bait for me, but uh, some guys like fishing that way. Well, we take it, you know, the years and years and years I spent on the water, and, and again, I said it earlier, one of the things I do is take out a jerk bait when I got a super cold front on top of me because, like you just said, what I have a tendency to do is work slow. I want to cover the water more mm -hmm. thoroughly. I want to literally probe a fish. I got a negative fish. Now, you were talking earlier about the water temps being in the ultra-low 60s. That, those fish are yeah. hibernating still. So when you take yeah. something like, like your glide bait or like the, like the uh, raptor and work that lure raptor slow the down those lines, it's nuts. Yeah, 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 the raptor on the paws. I mean, we catch, I don't know how many times I've reached in my pocket to grab, the, to grab my remote for my trolling motor when I'm with clients or friends, and that bait is just down there, sitting there, dead, dead sticking, sitting sitting in the spot and I, I have my hand on my remote and a fish nails that bait uh that there's not a lot of jerk baits out there to do that <laughs> at least i haven't been able to find them you know what are what are your lures made of todd yeah they're, they're we make our lures out of a resin i mean i grew up making lures and i you know i worked with dale wiley uh i used to use a lot of uh Ed Ladiano's lures, if anybody knows who that is, is an old-time lure maker from Elwood City, you know, and they're all made out of wood, and, you know, every piece of wood is different. You can add X amount of weight to that bait, and uh, it's never the same. We make our lures out of resin, so I, I, do, all the, I do all the molding and, and the making of the lures, and I can hit them within grams of each other, and, uh, you know, I can hit a bait that is going to be relatively neutral you know, it might be, your leader might make it sink, your leader might make it not sink, you know, it, it, as close as we can get it yep. to neutral buoyant. And uh, you can hit that consistently time and time again when you're using these resins. And that's what you can't do with wood. No, you, know, you can't. I love wood baits. You, you can't. can't do that. You just can't hit it. The, gen the gentleman who called me today, we're, we were talking about your lures, and I said, to be honest with you, I think they're made out of wood, but here I go. I'm totally wrong. They're made out of resin, which yeah. is a great concept. Yeah. That the, Anytime yeah. you that, take that, that lure it, to that material, you've got, you've got control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have control. I, I, I mix them in small batches, and I can hit that weight that we're trying to hit, and when I don't hit it, you know, we, we pull it out, but it, you know, it's relatively easy to do. 
and that that's why we went that route with our baits is because I can hit them consistently. We can put them out there for people, and uh, you know, they're all going to be pretty much the same. Let's take a look real quick. You you guys are you're doing something else too. I know I know you're on a system that trolling is quite frankly it's a mainstay uh, for what's going on out there, and you guys have come up for with. Sure. Pardon me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, out my way, trolling is the. I mean, I, there's lots of times when I go casting out here. I love casting. That's my way to catch them. I also do the guide trip, so sometimes I'm forced to troll. But uh, you know, around here, you see ten boats. There's eight, eight or nine of them trolling, and you got one or two casting. <laughs> yeah, and trolling, it's a trolling, it's a different tro world. Trolling is a discipline that I'm not very good at, to be honest with you. And it's per. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm serious yeah, though. I, I hear you. I'm serious. I yeah. I fished with I fished with Kyle Brixen up on Lake of the Woods. He talked me into going trolling for muskies. So we're out there, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, we're on Lake of the Woods in a time of the year where you should have been jerking on every reef there was, and we didn't have a single casting rod in the boat. So we continued to troll, <laughs> and I caught I about a I caught about a 15 pound rock. <laughs> <laughs> but but part of the reason part of the yeah. reason I don't troll is because my boat isn't set up for it. And you guys have yeah. really revolutionized, uh, to be honest with you, a, a way that people can handle their rods in rod holders. Give me a little background on before we look at this video clip. Give me a little background on the engineering, the concept. Where did it all come from? Yeah, I mean, we always wanted to be able to, I always wanted to be able to tip the rod up and down. You know, the, I, I just grew up doing that, and, you know, we had them rail mounted on our boat, on a rail, and we would just tighten that rail just tight enough that it would stay steady, but I could still tip that rod. You know, you can let the rod out, you can put your down rod out, if I see structure coming up, I can grab the handle and tip it up. Now, in doing that, all that stuff that was hooked on the rail was always on the boat, so it was on there. So now the whole time you're casting and everything, all this stuff's on. So, you know, Andy Andy is the brains behind our unit. Oh, uh, Andy is. I, I, Andy's the brains behind. <laughs> uh, Andy's Andy's the brains behind the manufacturing. <laughs> we'll put it that way. I tell him what I want, he brings it up, and uh, he 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 makes the stuff. You know, so I was like, you know, when these new track systems came out, you can mount this track on your boat, and I can strip this thing down. It takes me two minutes now we're casting and there's not all these rails on the side of my boat and things like that uh you know so he came up with this deal you know we have a uh, we have a rod holder that uh uh you know tippable that's the big thing with our rod holders you know you stick it out instead of having a fixed position rod holder uh in the down rod position where you got to reach out over the side of the boat to get back into the clamp where we're, we, we use a down east rod holder They've been around for like 50 years or more, and uh, you know we buy those from the from the guy. But we have a very solid mount. Some people have had some problems with some of that stuff breaking, and uh, you know we put it in there, and uh, you're able to tip these things up and down on the fly. If you're structure fishing, it's unbelievable, and uh, we have lots of lots of great guys using our stuff. I mean, with Greg Thomas, Tony Grant, uh, Pete Mana, Jason Hammernick. Uh, I can't even I can't even name everybody that's using our type of rod holders. Uh, let's let's take a look at the video of Simi. It is quite fascinating to be perfectly honest with you, the way you guys describe what these things do and the value they bring to the boat. A rail mount version mm -hmm. for the for the guys. Here we are. It looks like we're in your shop. we are got an audio track with this, so we'll let it track. ride. Uh, we, okay. you know, that's fine. So we came out with this today due to enough requests from, from various uh, customers. And uh, this is what we've come up with. Um, it's still tippable. Tension is adjustable there. With that bolt, you can uh, make it tighter or looser. You have all of your angle options. No problem there. Should you choose whichever which way you want the rod. Um, another cool feature about this that your uh, standard down east doesn't have. You can adjust how much reach you have. With these arms being long like this, you can loosen, loosen this plate. You can then tip this out, say if this is the outside of your boat out here, you can you can move your rod holder further out. That would give you a straighter down rod if you know in the event that you're down east right now that are mounted to your rails. 
uh, just don't quite get you vertical. You can achieve that with this. Uh, it's going to use the same Allen wrench that you use right there to adjust tension. Um, these these mounts are pretty beefy. They uh, you're not going to be uh, breaking these. I've heard some people having issues with their down easts uh, on their rails uh, to the point to where they they leash their rods. Uh, you're not going to have that with this. These are pretty sturdy. They're robust. Uh, once you snug these bolts down, this thing is not going to rotate at all, and it's not supposed to. All your rotation should be done right through here. Um, for more information, feel free to uh, message me, uh, Andrew at FatAZMuskie.com. Check us out, uh, FatAZMuskie Products on Facebook and FatAZMuskie.com. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I I think if I had that kind of setup on my boat, I might even uh, might even try trolling. To be honest with you, I even do some trolling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you you can structure troll with that stuff, and that's what we do. You know, you pull into a weed bed, and I look over at whoever's fishing with me. I'm like, okay, it's coming up. I can tip that rod up, and uh, you know, skim over those weeds, tip it down. We catch a lot of fish doing that. I mean, we've been doing that for years, and uh, I think we just came up with a nice, nice sturdy rod holder on a track system that you can, you know, strip it down when you want to go casting, which I haven't even hardly trolled yet this season. We're, we're casting right now, but when I do want to mix it in and out, I mean, you can strip it down. There's nothing for the net to get hung on, nothing for guys to do, uh, you know, to, to, to get hung up on, stuff like that. And uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's a nice system. Guys like them. It really is. I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Let's take just a couple of seconds here um, and uh, pay a couple of bills with some friends of ours on a couple of Canadian Shield lakes. And we're going to come back to your website. I want to talk about your website. I want to show the folks okay. what you have in these lures in terms of color patterns and get a better idea of the styles that are on there. Um, I, I, just, I just think it's so cool. Be right back after this break. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a Good. very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job, the guiding service. Uh, Randy started taking us out when I was 10, and we've been catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Again, guys, you can interact with us on the uh, Fish and Sticks uh, uh, Facebook page. We've got a couple of people here that are chiming in with us right now. We're going to get to those responses here in just a second. Uh, normally, we would have the phones, but we've got Todd Young on the phone from uh, Fat AZ Muskie, so we're occupying that line. That's not possible. So with that being said, I want to take, uh, I want to take a second, and uh, let's bring Todd back on. Todd, how you doing? Good. I'm doing good. We've got a couple of people on here. Uh, one, well, actually, there's quite a few, but one is saying in the private message is saying um, you guys' lures have a finish that's second to none. That's over on the private message side. Over on the actual nice. Facebook side, uh, we've got one that says uh, they love the Raptor big time. Um, and that's got to be Great. that's got to be nice to hear that. That's what we'd like to hear. That's what we'd like to hear. You know, I was fishing opening day out here. And uh, just with a friend, I, do, I don't take any clients the first few days on Chautauqua Lake uh, when I'm guiding. And I, I, was, I was drifting through an area, and I saw this guy get hooked up, and I saw the fish jump and get off. And there were two boats in the distance. I, don't, I didn't know who they were. Uh, but I heard the one guy yell to the other guy. They must have been fishing together. He's like, he said, uh, was that on a raptor? And he said, hell, yeah, it was on a raptor. <laughs> and, and I was, you know, it, you know it, it, it's just neat to hear. I don't even know who these people were, but it's nice to hear the guys, uh, you know, talking about the about the baits. And, uh, you know, it, it is a, you know, it, it, it's a great fish-catching bait. 
Uh, easy it, to use. That's the big thing about it. Yeah. It's so rewarding. I, I don't know, over the years I've developed, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to guess between 40 and 50 musky lures over the years, yeah. and some of these are still on the water being used today, still catching big fish. And one of the most gratifying things that I've, that I've ever had happen is when you walk a sports show and somebody comes up and they've got a picture. It's a 40-inch or it's a 42, it's a 54. Yeah. It's irrelevant yeah. what it is, but they say, yeah. I caught You're it right. on something you created. And that is so yeah. gratifying. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It is. We've it's, got it, a, it is. Uh, we've that, got a couple. What, go ahead. That's what makes lure makers go. Yeah. That's what makes lure makers go. You know, that's what keeps your drive going. Uh, we got a couple of guys chiming in here. Uh, one uh, one response I think is very enlightening. The hang time is amazing, and I cannot agree yeah. more. When I saw that in the tank, and I'm going, oh my yeah. goodness, oh could I catch fish on this thing? Oh, yeah. big time. <laughs> Oh man, and uh, Kyle Brixen's also on with us. He's uh, he's just indicated he's on with us tonight, listening to the show. Kyle is the person who in, tried to introduce me to musky trolling, and as Kyle will tell you, <laughs> I'm not the greatest candidate when it comes to trolling for muskies. I'm just not. But some of the one of these days, I'll pull out that footage with uh, with that rock. Um, you will get a. You got a rock. Oh, yeah. You'll get That'd a chuckle fun. out of two experienced musky fishermen fighting this thing because it would <laughs> it would roll back down, so it felt like yeah. a fish going the thunk, the thunk, the thunk. And we're fighting on this thing, and I says, Kyle, this can't be a fish, and he goes, Yes, guys, it's, it's a world record, it's a world record. So as we fought it, we fought it. Kyle <laughs> goes, I, I think you got a rock. And I pulled up yeah. a rock that was the size of a bowling ball. <laughs> yeah, when you're trolling, you can catch odd things. I've caught the hood of motors before. I've caught uh, window frames. You never know what you're going to catch when you're trolling. <laughs> Absolutely. I've got your website up. Let's take a look real quick because we didn't, we didn't talk much about it um, during the actual video piece of it. But... I like the the uh, the sloppy uh, swimmer that you have as well. That you've only got oh, yeah, a, the swim bait, yeah. Yeah, you've only got a couple of colors. It looks like fire tiger and white. Is there more than that? Oh yeah, there, there's more than that. We, you know, when we get them painted, we 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 throw them up on the website as we have them painted. Uh, you know, we try to keep that interactive. We, we, you know, we make a walleye color. We make a bunch of other colors. Those those baits come in a six, eight, six. Six inch, eight inch, and ten inch, which are four ounce, six ounce, and twelve ounce. And if you're a young man and you like throwing those big baits, that twelve ouncer, that's ten inches long, and that paddle tail, go ahead, go for it, man. That's a good workout. <laughs> so you can take you can take these things and pull them off a coontail, milfoil, cabbage, off of rock edges. I mean, you can pull them off just about anything you want. Yeah. I, 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 I use them. I use them like a jerk bait. You know, I let that thing settle down. We jig with them. Uh, you know, sometimes when I got guys, older guys in my boat, I'll have them just jig off the back corner of the boat. And I'll tell you what, those guys catch as many fish as anybody else. J j you know, jigging with that bait. I mean, it's just you know, it's like a big uh, sassy shad. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna uh, have to. I'm gonna have to believe too that you probably catch a few big walleyes on it as well. Yeah, we catch some big walleyes on those too. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it's it's nice, easy to use bait. It's got a great roll to it. I don't know if there's been any video feed of it, but I mean, that thing rolls around like crazy. That's what got Andy into the lure making. That's how I met Andy. That's how we became Fat Easy Musky Products. Uh, you know, I ran into a local guy that was making a rubber bait, and I knew I needed something to do with uh, my my clients and things, and. Uh, Ran into him, took one out. We got one on like the third cast we threw in the lake. I was like, yeah, this thing will work. And uh, we use them all the time. There's a lot of guys that are addicted to those baits. <laughs> well, it, I've got... Know, it, it, Go ahead, it, I'm sorry. It, it's a rubber bait, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's a rubber bait. You know, the guys, you know, they're they're like disposable musky lures. It's great. <laughs> I've you got... Know, they only take so many fish. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, something that's perishable has to be replaced. It's, it's called right. a moneymaker. Right. I mean, 
I give those guys, you know, the guys who made the bulldog. I mean, what a great, what a great lure. I mean, how many fish have been caught on that stuff since it's been been made? You know, I have Wiley lures I've had for, I've been using for thirty years, and they still catch fish. But you know, that rubber stuff, it does work, and it catches fish, <laughs> and uh, it's disposable. You can only get so many till it's gone. Uh, you got to get some new ones and new colors, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely, no question about it. Speaking of colors, <laughs> speaking of colors, I've got your Raptor chart up now. We're looking at small portions of it. I'm going to manipulate this so we can see what's going on here. Um, I'm at the bottom of the of the six inch chart now. I'm looking at your Fire Tiger and your mm -hmm. your three mile perch, and then I get over yep. to this thing called an Orange Julius. Or Julius, yeah. Yeah. Do you or know where that color pattern. pattern came from? I have no idea. I called it after Julius Irving. I was the very first person to ever, ever paint a lure up that color and shoot a television show with it. Oh, that's cool. I did chartreuse cool. and black spots, and I did orange, fluorescent mm -hmm. orange and black spots. We were up on Morrison, out of Morrison, Ontario, on the houseboats, Ontario Wilderness houseboats. And we pulled up there, we had all these brand new lures, and I, I, I went in and I asked, where can I paint some lures? And Yvonne Gill looked at me and she goes, where can you what? I says, where can I paint some lures? Why would you want to paint lures? I says, because what I want to fish with isn't made. And she goes, i got to yeah, see yeah, this. Yeah. So we walked around the side of the building, we found a place we could prop up some cardboard and hang some lures real quick. and. And I painted up the chartreuse bandit and the orange bandit as they mm -hmm. become so popular in our family of lures over the years. Yeah. And two of the most dynamic colors, in my opinion, a bright light and low light must carry baits, period. Um, yep. Yep. The other thing I see when I look at your color patterns throughout your family of lures is contrast. Your, the center mm -hmm. of your color pattern chart gives us perch and the dirt perch and the chartreuse perch and the orange perch and the mud puppy all of these have got contrast built into the color patterns and i don't know how many people realize this or not but contrast in a color pattern is paramount absolutely paramount yeah i definitely agree with that you just want that contrast i think those fish pick up that you know we we don't even know if these fish can see, how much of these fish can even see the color, but they can definitely pick up those contrasts. I that's that that that's my feeling. I do too. <laughs> I totally agree with you. You've also yeah, you, you've yeah. also got your clear water patterns, your open your open lake patterns too. You've got your golden shiners, golden rapalas, silver rapalas, uh, silver yep. shiner. You've got all those color patterns covered in the six inch family. Are you doing the same thing down in the eight inch? Oh, yeah, 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 the 6, the 8, the 10, they all come in the same colors. You know, it's just a matter, we're, we're a small business. You know, I, I make them, I get them to Andy, he does the painting. That's our, that's our uh, you know, partnership in the deal. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes there's some available, some not. But, uh, you know, we try to keep up with everything. Uh, we, we, you know, we pretty much do all of them in, the, in all the colors. It looks to me, based on your website, your price point on your six inch is hovering right there at about eighteen dollars. Is that still correct? Mm -hmm. Which, which? Yeah, for I believe so. I think it's eighteen or eighteen or twenty. The, the, uh, the, 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 the eight inches are. Oh, hit me with something here. I think they're twenty eight. The ten inches might be maybe thirty-five, something like that. Uh huh. Well, yeah. When you get into ten inch, the whole world changes. That's a pretty dynamic change. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bulk there. There's a lot of stuff going into those lures. Yeah. You know, and then and then you know the swim baits. You know, they should be priced accordingly on 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 the uh, on the site. And uh, yeah, we have fun with it. You know, it's so neat. Just like you said, it's so cool to hear people catching fish. We get pictures all the time and guys all over the country catching fish on them and but we're not a big company and we don't have a lot of people uh using the stuff but the guys that use it love it so you've got to run with it <laughs> well i'd like to help you get more users out there um and i want to try that st i want to try the stinger glide bait i kid you not the, the way that thing 
cants itself back and forth so rhythmic and so controlled. Um, I, I come back from, you know, we, we showed you the early piece of our jerk baits in the old days, 25 years ago, and Reef Hog was one of my go-to baits. And Mike McCullen oh, and yeah. I used to talk in those days, still do today, but I would tell Mike, Mike, when you build my lures for me, I want them built a specific way. And he, he to this day says I could catch more fish if I weren't worried about everything being so absolutely symmetrical. But I like that. <laughs> I like that predictable yeah. side to side, you know, and he could do it. Yeah. They could build them. They could build them where you could, you oh, know, yeah. every one of them run perfect. When I say perfect, I mean the way I want them to run. Um, yeah. We had people yep. catch fish on every kind of reef hog you can imagine. In fact, is Kurt Fenton last week on last week's show, you saw a 57 and a half on uh, on, a, on a reef hog on a nine inch reef hog. So they're killer baits. But when you look at this, mm -hmm. when you look at your stinger, your glide bait, oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. It follows through. I mean, it's a slow working bait. You got to take your time with it. Well, that's. I mean, but that's that, what you're supposed to do with a jerk bait anyway. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we 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 we've caught some great fish on those baits. You know, we've got got great fish on all of our baits. Uh, just a matter of getting them out there, getting people using them. <laughs> and one of the things that you do that that I think we need to make mention of. I know we briefly touched on it, but I really want to make mm -hmm. sure people understand, and that's the fact that you're guiding. You're getting out on the water, yeah. you're taking clients on the water, and you're teaching them the sport. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's tough. That's how the whole lure business came around, you know. Like I said, handing, you can't just hand somebody a glider and say go that's never even thrown a bait caster before. You know, we try to keep it open. We just try to create some stuff that's, that, that's really neat. Uh, that, you know, it's going to push the industry forward push us forward push everybody forward and uh you know guide guiding is a different totally different issue you know you take people out that have never thrown a bait cast or never thrown anything so you you start with teaching them that and i can hand them a raptor and they can take a couple jerks with it and at least it's getting down into that uh you know the strike zone where i want it right you know out off the edge of the weeds out in 14 feet of water right off the weed break they they give a they give a couple pulls, it gets down there, it'll stay down there. That's why I've had, you know, you know, 70 year old women and kids catch fish on these things. I don't think I could do it with a lot of the other baits because the bait would be on the surface. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, the, somebody, the hang time's big. <laughs> some of these lures take a little bit more, a little bit more technique than what most people have in their arsenal. So when you've got exactly. a bait that works easily, it, chances are pretty good it's going to get bit more often, and that's the key. That's the biggest thing we tried. That's the biggest thing we try to come up up with with Andy. I was like, I need, I need baits that'll get down quick. I need baits that can do this, and uh, you know, that's the whole basis of the business. Easy to use easy to work and uh and they work <laughs> yeah and they're from from what we're talking about tonight it looks like they're quality built too which is a real key factor yeah it's a yeah. real real big yeah. factor yeah we got a nice nice finish andy got onto the painting really quick and you know great baits uh I'm on your website right now i'm actually oh i lost it i'm actually looking for your here we go I'm looking for your guide side. So I've got her up here. Let's take a look at it. I want people to know how to reach you for the Muddy Creek Fishing Guides. Yeah. Um, in yeah. my opinion, uh, people who have the ability to teach other people how to accelerate and enjoy a sport are without any question a credit to that sport. And I've, in the short period we've been doing Fish and Sticks TV, I've had the opportunity to meet a number of people who are just like you they're in that league they want to yeah. teach people so if you would let's tell them yeah. how to reach out to you how can they get a hold of you okay my uh, guide business is, is uh, muddy creek fishing guides mcfishandguides.com uh, we do a little bit in Pennsylvania in the early season April May but very, I'm talking very little anymore and uh, you know we start our season up on Chautauqua 
Chautauqua Lake, New York, very famous body of water, lots of big, lots of nice fish. I'm not going to say big fish compared to what everybody's getting everywhere, but, uh, you know, w- w- we get a lot of nice quality fish. And uh, that season starts Memorial Day weekend, last week, last Saturday in May is when it starts, and then it runs through uh, end of November. We fish through about the second week in November. And uh, we've been doing it for many many years now uh lots of lots of great stuff to check out on our website you know if you check out the website lots of good stuff to check out lots of nice pictures love getting kids involved i have a i have a fellow that guides with me and he's been sending me pictures all day he had a little girl out there she looks like she's probably six years old so he took her on a troll trip but he said she did have a follow on her own (laughs) on a raptor uh, she was excited about the follow, but he's been he's been feeding me fish pictures from the trolling bite, and uh, yeah, we just try to get the kids involved. I love taking kids out. I got an eight year old daughter. She got a great fifty some incher last year, and uh, we try to get everybody involved. These are awesome. They're awesome. What? And this is a tough tough question, but on a normal mm-hmm. guide trip. Uh, for people who are catching fish, where do you think the average fish is falling today? Average size? Yeah. Oh, on our lake here? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's at, yeah, the average size is mid, mid to upper 30 inch. And of course, you've got the horses in there too. Yeah, you got some big ones in there. Obviously, you can't put everything on the computer, so I try to feed, you know, some nicer fish. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same thing. We catch, you know, we, we get a lot of fish in Chautauqua. There's some years we've caught close to 300 muskies throughout the season. And, you know, when, when, you know, some people say, what's the average size, 50 inches? I'm like, no, the average <laughs> size is not even anywhere near 50. That's, <laughs> there's only one. There's only one or two over 50. The average size is like 36. <laughs> Don't we wish they you were know? average 50? Well, maybe yeah, not. Maybe I not. Slow down. 50. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Yeah. We'd have some pretty bloody yeah, fingers they if they were all 50s. Yeah, yeah, they don't average that size. But hey, listen, Todd, I want to... It, 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 it's a great numbers like. I want to say thanks uh, for coming on the show tonight. And I know we we didn't have the luxury because you're, you're up there right now on Chautauqua. You have no way to see what we're talking about on video here tonight. So we're doing this blindsided. Yeah. And you've done a very yeah. good job dealing with that, not knowing a thing yeah. about what we're putting up on the screen. And I want to wish you yeah. the best. I want to say thanks to you and Andy. And I want you guys to, to thank uh, Wade Alexander for getting that lure to me. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and that glider looks like, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. I yeah. can tell you, I, I told the gentleman I was talking to on the phone today, I said, if, if I'd have had that bait when I was shooting my show, I know we could have put more big fish in the boat. I know for a fact. No <laughs> offense or buts about it. Yeah. Just no yeah. question. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate it. You know, here's a couple other things I'm going to bring up real quick here. You can check out our podcast. We do the Fat AZ Musky podcast. We're going to do episode number 100 tonight. We've been doing it for a couple years, almost a couple years. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of people listen to that. Uh, I want to bring up some of our sponsors, if you don't mind, Bob. Oh, you know, go Bosch for it. Lures. Oh, absolutely. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Bosch Shed Lures out of uh, Ohio, Paul Presturio. Uh, he makes he makes a great lure. We catch a lot of fish on those. We have Baker Bait, Zach Baker out of Rochester, New York. He makes a bait we catch a ton of fish on. Dale Wiley, I think most people have heard of that name, Wiley Lures. It's been around for like 40 years. Uh, you know, Dale's been a sponsor, but, uh, you know, check out our podcast. Uh, it's the Fat Easy Musky podcast, and hopefully we can work with Bob in the future here and keep this, uh, keep this thing going. Maybe, maybe next year we'll get on again, and, uh, I appreciate your time, Bob, and I appreciate everything you've done. Well, I thank you very much, but I only have one question for you. Why are we going to wait till next yeah. year? 
Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it before then. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime Absolutely. we can do things to elevate the angler, whether it's with product knowledge. The next time I have you on, though, I think I'd like to get in some of the details of the fishing side of it, the techniques you guys are using, how you're locating your fish. Cool. You and I talked off, off camera today, and you're very yeah. educated when it comes to the fish, and I'd like to you know, dive into that a little bit, too. Yeah, sounds great, man. Anytime. Anytime. Well, Todd, I want to thank you for being on the show. I wish you guys the best, and uh, good Lord, uh, go catch some big fish for us, would you please? <laughs> we will. We're, we're going to try. First thing in the morning, I'll be out there trying. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Good night. Have a good one. Hey, folks, um, we're going to wrap this thing up tonight. It's a little different show. The, the whole point of doing fishing sticks like we're doing live right now is no, sh no two shows are alike. They're not. They're never going to be alike. I've had people over the years ask me to go out and redo Muskies in the Shield A to Z. From the start to the finish, we've got so many more pieces of information and so many more great pieces of video and so much more knowledge and so many more lure manufacturers and rod manufacturers and all of the above that didn't exist 25 years ago when we did muskies in the shield if you want to see us do muskies in the shield again start sending me some emails or do some messaging here on F fishing sticks uh, facebook page and warm it up Make sure I understand just how much you guys want us to put the time and effort in to redo Muskies in the Shield A to Z. We can call it version 2 if you want. With that being said, I want to thank all of our sponsors. I want to thank the people who make our show possible. We got, we got Midnight Sun up in Alaska with Giant Pike, folks. If you want to go challenge Giant Pike and you want to do it on a remote river system, the Unoko River system in Alaska, that's the place to go. If you want to go to a system that can give you an opportunity at absolutely gigantic lake trout, I, I broke the world record twice on this system on lake trout, and I broke the world record on northern there as well. And that's go see Cliff Blackmore up at Other Side River Lodge in Athabasca, another awesome place. And it with, comes down to muskies, folks, central Ontario. We've got, we've got Witch Bay camps nestled on the east side of Lake of the Woods, giving you exposure to one of the greatest bodies of water on the planet. You can fish top to bottom. You can fish 100 miles of that water. Oh, it's amazing. And if you don't have that big, giant boat that can get up there and run on that rough water if it turns rough on you, then check out Century Lodge. They're up on Osborne Bay of Eagle Lake, and they will also give you a great experience you can fish a big water in small style if you want with giant fish and if you're gonna do it catch those fish on my favorite rod get a hold of Jim Grant get a hold of Jim Grant rods put them in your boat and start catching big fish with that being said I'm Bob Masacomer for Fish and Sticks I want to wish everybody a great evening and thanks for letting us intrude into your living room into your office or wherever you're watching us tonight maybe on your carry device going into the restaurant or maybe you're gassing up your vehicle with your boat headed to the lake regardless of where it is thanks for taking the time to watch us we want to thank you we'll see you next week for more fishing sticks folks it is what it is it's the way we're going forward in this sport. I have nothing else to say except God bless. Go kick a little tail.